What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Let's Talk Night. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about developing a spiritual and healthy thought life. My name is Dom. This is Roz, Jacob, and we have Faith here. Um, we wanted to start in a scripture in Proverbs 4.23. It says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. So what I first wanted to talk about is what is a spiritual and healthy thought life? Mm-hmm. We want to define what a spiritual and healthy thought life is versus an unspiritual and unhealthy thought life. So when I think of a spiritual and healthy thought life, I think of one that is thinks about God, mm-hmm. thinking about love, hope, and faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thoughts that build people up, thoughts mm-hmm. that bring vision to your life and to other people's lives, and mm-hmm. thoughts that endure when it is hard. When I think of an unspiritual and unhealthy thought life, I think about one that's mainly thinking about self. That's that are constantly thinking about me and what mm-hmm. I can get. Mm-hmm. They can get negative, critical towards others, um, constantly sitting in guilt mm-hmm. and doubt that kind of just doesn't believe that things can move forward and change. Yeah, yeah. Um, another big factor, I believe, uh, of an unspiritual and healthy thought life is being hidden, meaning we don't talk about our actual thoughts. I grew up this way, and a lot of people do, right? Yeah, right. I didn't know it was healthy to talk about my negative um, and critical thoughts because I was never taught this growing up. The healthy things seemed not to talk about thoughts at all. This way of staying hidden um, was it had a devastating impact on my family and my and my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was 11 years old, my sister unexpectedly committed suicide mm-hmm. uh, right before um, she was going to turn 17. Yeah. Uh, this was a tragic time for my family and it was hard for me to understand why this happened yeah um i believe she didn't know how to deal with the overwhelming thoughts of fears insecurities right. self-criticalness and doubt she had yeah i too struggle with these thoughts and often have negative self-critical thoughts um that stay in my head and mm-hmm. i often criticize and compete with others in my head yeah, yeah that's real a big thing for me is that i need to combat these negative thoughts with scriptures from the bible praying and just talking to friends because I saw the impact it had on my family and my sister's life and I wanted that to change for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, developing a uh, spiritual and healthy thought life, super important. I feel like, like the scripture you shared, it's, they really just shape our lives. Mm-hmm. They affect our choices, our relationships, careers, academics, like just how we function on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, I have a huge overthinker, so I have a lot that runs to my mind on a daily yeah. basis, starting right when I wake up. The thing you, I related to the most is like the thoughts about just myself. Because yep. ultimately, yeah. a majority, probably 99% of those morning thoughts are about me. Yep. What's my schedule for the day? Right. How can I be the most productive? Thinking yeah. about how I look, how I can get the most attention, about recognition, that. respect in a day. Yeah. It shapes how I dress, how mm. I talk, who I talk to. Oh my goodness, all super overly consuming and exhausting. Yeah. Um, as the day progresses, I'm walking around like comparing myself to other people. Like every single person is like my op. I'm yep. like, in full competition yeah. with them, especially like, other girls. Like who's yeah. funnier, who is prettier. <laughs> I make everything into this huge competition and what I need to do to just look good and get people's approval. Right, yeah. Um, I think like the part I don't talk about though is like the deeper insecurity of like quite, yeah. where those thoughts like come from. Yeah. Um, just thinking about like who I am, what do I bring to the table, you mm-hmm. know? Um, I can feel like I'm not a value or I'm capable of being loved unless I earn it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, that's that's really the underlying thought is I'm not good enough. I never will be. Right. Um, I have to perform. I'm not good enough for people and definitely not God. Mm. Yeah. My insecurity and fear that people aren't going to like me or love me just drives me yeah. where I can't actually care about the people around me. Mm. I remember when my grandma was really sick with cancer, I felt a ton about it yeah. every single day. Yeah. Like the mm-hmm. sadness just took up all of my mental space. Yeah. And instead of just sharing it with my roommates at the time, I was like, nah, they don't care. Yeah. They don't want to hear about this every single day. I felt like a broken mm-hmm. record. I right. felt burdensome. I felt annoying. I was so afraid of being rejected by them. I ended up becoming super critical, super competitive with them as a way to protect myself. Mm-hmm. I was like, if I am better than them, they can't hurt me. Yeah. In my mind, I'm like, they, yep. how, are, how are they gonna hurt me? I'm like, up here, they're right here. Right. <laughs> um, but I didn't realize that prevented me from caring about them. Yeah. And it also prevented me from getting the love and encouragement I needed at the time. Yeah. That's fact, yeah. I thought of the scripture in Matthew. It says, the only source of light for the body is the eye. If you look at people and want to help them, you will be full of light. But if you look at people in a selfish way, you'll be full of darkness. <laughs> and if the only light you have is really darkness, you have the worst kind of darkness. Man. Yeah. When my focus is all on me, I can't think about other people as people and love them in the way that God wants me to love them. Mm-hmm. Um, I can either see people as out to get me or as competition. Mm-hmm. So either way, not loving people. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I can't actually get close to people. When my thoughts are selfish, my actions are also selfish and they'll affect my relationships because no one wants to be friends with someone who's constantly competing with them or who thinks they're better than them. I know I wouldn't want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think my thoughts won't affect other people. They really do come out without us realizing. Yeah. Our thoughts determine who we care about and what we do. Yeah, um, that's true. I have a question, Ross. So practically, okay. like, day to day, what does that look like when you're like, I am, I just want to be better than you right now. Mm. Now what? What does that look like? Yeah, I just run a mile a minute. So I think it's really slowing down with God to really evaluate, like, what am I doing? Mm. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm. What are my motives? What's the deeper heart stuff? think really taking time in prayer to see what's underneath all my thoughts, right. to really see what's true. Yeah. Like taking a thought and practically being like, hey, where'd that thought come from? Where'd that thought come from? Yeah. Where'd that thought yeah. come from? Right. Um, and usually it's probably rooted in some sort of insecurity or deep-rooted childhood thing, but <laughs> but it's cool because then I can actually tackle like that unbelief at the root like with God of, okay, what, what need do I need to get met by God? Be able to love somebody else yeah, yeah that's dope that's Faith, i know we were talking recently about your ADHD, adhd how do you think that impacts you in this way yeah mm. uh, a lot i think um <laughs> yeah. i think for me the first step to changing my thought life yeah. is figuring out okay where is it not spiritual where yeah. is it not healthy right, right. Yeah. um it reminds me of a scripture in psalm 27 it says i'm asking god for one thing only one thing to live with him in his house my whole life long I'll contemplate his beauty. I'll study at his feet. That's the only quiet, secure place in a noisy world. Mm. The perfect getaway far from the buzz of traffic. Mm. Um, and I relate to scripture a ton. I feel like the buzz of traffic is like the perfect analogy <laughs> yeah. for my brain sometimes, right? right? Yeah. Like I'm locked in. People are honking at me and telling me to go somewhere I can't. There's <laughs> sirens. And I'm like, I don't know where they're coming Sounds from. Sounds like San Francisco. Sounds like San Francisco. Right. Um, and I think you know, my, my thoughts can feel really intrusive and really mm -hmm. fast and I just like can't stop them, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can sit there and I'm trying to do assignments, but like the only thing I can think about is like, I'm stupid, I don't deserve to graduate, mm -hmm. like I can't do this, mm -hmm. um, I'm just an imposter, right? And then I get really wrapped up in myself, my image, what do I look mm -hmm. like? Like, and I just crumble under yeah. all of my thoughts, right? right. Yeah. Um, but what's cool about this scripture is God's like, no, like I'm a getaway, right? From mm -hmm. all of the thoughts, he's a quiet mm -hmm. and secure place. Um, but like, in order to get that, I gotta make the first move and I gotta let God in on all my thoughts, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think I can go like a really long time lying. Like I'll lie to myself, I'll lie to my friends, I'll That's lie to good. God <laughs> about all of my thoughts, right? All That's of the negative that, yeah. thoughts. Um, because I'm like, I don't want to admit that like my self esteem is taking a hit. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, no yeah. yeah, that's not me. Um, yeah. But I don't want to like feel that pain either, you know. Yeah. And my pride can stop me from just being honest with God, being honest with my mm -hmm. friends. And then I, you know, God can't encourage me. My friends can't encourage me. Yeah. I'm just on my own. Yeah. Um, but when I'm honest, God can give me that comfort, right? Um, and I'm not going to get it in the other things I run to, which mm -hmm. reminds me another scripture. It's First um, John one six to seven. It says, if we say we have a relationship with God and yet we live in the dark, we're lying. We aren't being truthful. But if we live in the light in the same way that God is in the light, we have a relationship with each other and the blood of his son, Jesus, cleanses us from every sin. Nice. So the scripture is like when I'm in like when I'm honest and I'm in the light, um, mm -hmm. I can get closer to God and my friends. Yeah. Right. But when I keep all of my thoughts hidden and in the dark, I'll never get the peace that like the Psalm right. 27 scripture yeah. talks about. Mm -hmm. um, I think it starts in prayer for me. Right. Um, just being honest about where I'm at and just like telling God all of it. But I can't just yeah. sit in it, you know? Yeah. Like I have to pray through scriptures, right. pray through like, this is what God thinks of me, realizing like, yeah. no, God cares. God wants to just be my friend, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then fighting to believe that. And then I think telling my friends too, like mm -hmm. this is what's going on. And it doesn't mean that my head won't ever be busy or that my ADHD will just suddenly go away and I'll yeah. be cured. Yeah. Um, but God can help me see it spiritually and be able to slow down like with him, yeah. you know? Um, and when I'm honest, I can make room for God's word and I can actually store them in my heart. So the last part mm -hmm. of that first John scripture says, but God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he'll forgive our sins. He'll forgive every wrong thing we've done. He'll make us pure. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar. His word is not in us. So when I slow down, I'm honest, like God's word is in me, which mm -hmm. helps me fight all yeah. those negative thoughts. Yeah, I can relate a lot to, man, just how busy my mind, I don't have any issue, but I think anxiety is just huge. Like no, exactly. just recently moved to San Francisco. It's super competitive. <laughs> I never really wanted to move there, to be honest, but it's great, it's great. Come, come through, come through the city. Um, but it's, I can relate, man. It's, it's really hard when my mind is busy to really slow down. I need prayer a lot more. And actually, you, Faith, and, and Dom, too. Raz, you too. I'll include you in there. You know, y'all really helped me out. Like, really just changed the way I think about God, the way I think about prayer, the way I think about anxiety. And it um, reminds me of a scripture, actually, in Romans 12, verse 2 in the NLT. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Mm -hmm. Man, so I know for me, man, one thing that's really been hard for me to change my thought life about, the way I think about it, is emotions, like in general. Like 
how I feel about emotions, my emotions, expressing yeah. emotions, other people expressing their emotions, like all of it. It's mm-hmm. really hard for me to change the way I think about that. I think growing up in my community and my family, I mean, my family's great, not blaming my family, but just like it just growing up, you know, around like, I think especially as a guy too, like emotions are viewed as weak, you know, mm-hmm. emotions are viewed as like, oh, you can't handle what you're going through, you know, or you're being dramatic, mm-hmm. you know, or you're too immature, you're too yeah. insecure, you know? And so anytime I express emotions or Anytime I thought about it, anytime I felt a lot of emotions, like automatically felt like I'm just really weak right now, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so I'm going to close off. I'm going to hide, you know, um, and stay hidden, you know, like Dom, you were talking about before. But I think when I look at the Bible, right, Jesus was actually, he, he did a completely different way. He had a completely right. different like thought, like thought process about emotions. Mm-hmm. A great example of this is Jesus wept, right? Like, I think a lot of us can quote that scripture. It's like, oh, it's a really short scripture. It's funny. You know, yeah. I know faith in the car. When something happens, she's like, Jesus wept. You know, <laughs> like, and, and so I think we can, you know, it's like, it's, it's, you know, but I think it's actually a really like dope thing. It's a crazy thing, challenging thing for me that Jesus actually would cry like right. that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like yeah. Jesus in, you know, in, in John eleven thirty five, that scripture, he cried when his friend passed away, you yeah. know? And Hebrews 5, 7 says that Jesus cried about the same situation three times, like yeah. three times in a row, the same situation, nothing changed, but he went and cried about it, you know? Yeah. And not just that, he actually begged God, pleaded with God for it. He was open with God and actually told his friends like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm sorrowful to the point of death. Like yeah. this dude was sweating blood, you know? Yeah. So this dude was super emotionally expressive, right? Mm-hmm. But for him, it didn't mean weakness, right? Yeah. And so while my thought process thinks emotions is just weak, it, you know, I'm not good enough, right? Mm-hmm. Jesus thought process about emotions helps him to actually connect with other people. He cried in front of his friends. He was able to be like just super emotionally expressive. I remember for me, whenever I felt like crying, I would hide. And I remember in high school, a week straight, I just cried by myself in the bathroom, you know, because right. I was just so afraid of people seeing me being emotional, mm-hmm. right? Um, but when I actually like I changed my mind and changed the way I think about what it means to express emotions, I get to find out what it means to actually let uh, God's will like mm-hmm. run my life, you know, mm-hmm. and it's good and pleasing and perfect. Yeah. Um, I remember he just he just changed my relationships, how I built relationships. I know dating before, I was just never really able to open up, you know, like I would just be in it because it felt good, you know, or be in it because it made me feel good, it made me look good. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I'm in a relationship with Faith, actually, and this, I mean, she's great, by the way. I mean, you guys know her, she's dope. <laughs> but I remember the first time, like, I cried in front of Faith, it was at Six Flags, right? And, and we we're just sitting in the parking lot, and, and I just started breaking down about my grandpa, you know, and, like, that was the first time. Like I really, but I know in that moment, I felt super close to her, yeah. you know? To the point where even we went on Batman and that was the first time I've been on roller coaster in a while and I like peed my pants a little bit. <laughs> but like, I, don't know, I was able to tell her, you know? But I was like, that's like a closeness like I have not it's felt gone. in a long time, it you know? It did yeah, happen. Hey, you're not vulnerable. close to your girlfriend until you're able to say like you peed a little bit on a roller coaster, all right? You're not close until then. But that, that relationship changed. And I think also too, my relationship with my family changed, right. you know, like mm-hmm. we went from, I, I wouldn't talk about anything deep with my family or let down by my family to yeah, actually yeah. every other Sunday. Now we have family devos with my family mm-hmm. where we That's talk cool. about real things going on in our life. Yeah. Even recently, my friendships have went from just built on doing stupid stuff together to we actually get to sit down, do Bible studies or go mm-hmm. on walks, go on hikes, pray awesome. together and talk about, man, yeah. how do we have a healthy thought life? Yeah. Man, when mental health is hitting us, man, when we're, when it's, when we're negative, when things aren't going our way, how do we actually be vulnerable? How do we actually go to God with our weaknesses, you know? And I actually been able to help a couple of friends this past summer, like get baptized and actually That's build awesome. their relationship with God, which is super so, cool. Yeah. But I wouldn't have been here at all. I wouldn't be thinking this way if I never chose to let God change the way I think. Mm-hmm. And I think we all have that decision, right? Every day we have a decision, man, am I going to keep the way I think or am I going to choose God's way of thinking, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? And so for us, I just want to ask you guys, what are some ways you guys actually can develop that healthy thought life and choose God's way of thinking over your own? For sure, music helps yeah. me, especially in the mornings. Uh, like I said, wake up anxious, overthinking. Music helps me get my mind um, set on God. I think yeah. it's, I play a lot of songs that remind me of God and our relationship, and it helps me just drown out all of the noise a little bit so I can actually focus as I read my yeah. Bible and then eventually pray. I think for me, a I, I, big thing for me is um, just laying down with friends. Um, yeah. A lot of the times I get really self-critical um, at myself and I, I feel weak a lot of times and I'm, yeah. I'm very timid. Um, and when I don't deal with that stuff, it just comes out in, in ways of jealousy, competitiveness. Mm. Yeah. Um, but just really just being able to, to let down. Yeah. Like you were talking yeah. about as a guy, like it's really hard and you yeah. want to compete all the time. Yeah. But when I'm real, um, with the people that are around me, that, that yeah. are close to me, that um, yeah. it helps me to actually be myself. Yeah, yeah. that's far. Yeah, I think for me, I think that'll pull me out of what I'm doing in that moment Mm -hmm. and focus me back on God. So I have an alarm that goes off every day at one o'clock with the Mm -hmm. scripture. So I'm like, whatever I'm doing, I'm typically doing homework at that point so I can stop and be like, okay, where's God, right? Mm -hmm. Um, 
leaving and going on a walk for five minutes, right? Yeah. Praying, yeah. talking to God, um, just getting out so I'm out of my head and refocused on God helps me a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I know for myself, I had a couple, I know one, um, I've been at this trying to change the way I see emotions for a while now, but one thing that super helped is Faith actually two years ago before we started dating sent me an anxiety lifeline that was just a whole bunch of scriptures on anxiety. Nice. There was a picture that that showed, it was a billboard that says showing your emotions doesn't make you a weak person. And I remember <laughs> in that moment, I looked at my roommate and I was like, I showed him, I was like, it's funny, isn't it? And he was like, yeah, okay, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but I've been working on this for a while, but I know, man, when, I'm sent, when people send me studies or I make studies for other people about like, mm-hmm. man, this is what God thinks about this topic. Mm-hmm. That's super helpful. And something that my sister actually put me on was, writing down scriptures on index cards and putting them around the house so that me and my roommates could just get reminded of the way God thinks, mm-hmm. you know, just just every throughout the day, mm-hmm. you know? And so um, for you guys, man, hopefully you guys have learned a lot from this time about how to develop a spiritual and healthy thought life. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you guys listening to Lex Talk and, and we'll see you guys next time.